We'd like to make your dreams come true at Active Riding Trips. Whether you're an active horseman, avid horseman, or part-time horseman, you can enjoy Active Riding Trips. You can ride the Gold Rush Ride in the mountains of California near the Gold Rush Find, the hills of New England and Vermont, Virginia fox hunting, Tuscany to Ireland, and to South America. It's all there for you. You'll be treated like a king or a queen at ActiveRidingTrips.com. Get a hold of them, make your dreams come true, and make memories. Andus, professional, lightweight, versatile grooming tools for a best-in-show finish with every stroke. With Andus Power Stroke, you have a heavy-duty, high-speed, power groom for professional results every time you clip. Also, get great horse grooming tips from Dana Boyd Miller and from Andis. Check us out at Andis.com, also on Facebook and Twitter. Hey, welcome to Speaking of Horses. Guess what? We are in Colorado. We're in beautiful Denver. We're at the National Western Stock Show Grounds, but we are at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo. We got a lot of things we want to show you here, and of course, I'm hanging out by the chuck wagon just in case. But we got a lot of neat things we want to show you here at the Horse Expo. And uh, as I'm doing this intro right now, Temple Grandin, Dr. Temple Grandin, uh, who was made famous in the movie, you know, recently in her books, she is a professor here at Colorado State in Fort Collins. She's doing a lecture right now, which is standing room only. But we've got trainers, clinicians, miniature horses, all kinds of horses and eventing going on here at the Rocky Mountain Horse. Expo. So stay with us on Speaking of Horses. Let's watch. We're going to go see everything that's happening besides this chuck wagon at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo. Well, here we are Speaking of Horses. We're at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo, Denver, Colorado. And uh, I'm very happy to be sitting here next to uh, one of the presenters here and got some really nice DVDs we're going to tell you about. Uh, but Anna Twinney is my guest, and uh, it's very nice to have you here. Very nice to meet you. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, how you got started doing this with horses. Oh, it, it's a long story, so I'm going to have to make it short, but it's an interesting story. Um, it was actually in the UK. So I'm originally from England, grew up in Germany, but my career was in the UK. And everything led to horse whispering. So my career led there. I was a bobby in England, a police officer, and I wanted to take the bedside manner back to the the British police force. We were at the time one of the best in the world, but it was still a matter of saying the horses could teach us something, how to behave, how to move, how to be conscious of the body language, how to resonate, how to blend energy, all of it. So my horse Carrie in England was a little bit challenging for me. She's a Palomino, she's still alive, she's 24 today. And so she was partially the cause. People were saying go harder on her, go harsher. And I knew innately that that wasn't the way, but I didn't know anything better. I saw Monty Roberts in demo in England. I was fortunate, the stars aligned, and I ended up um, not just doing the course in England, but then going to Flag is Up Farm in California. In those days, we called it pre-fame because the farm was a farm. I became um, a groom there, I worked there, Monty decided to set up a school, and so I was one of the people leading that. I ended up creating the school, creating a lot of the programs, riding the racehorses, dealing with the remedial horses, working with the the horses so doing the horse whispering I was there all in in that fold for about six years before I ended up branching off yeah. and bringing bringing a little bit of my own flair into things well and you do that you know everybody you learn from people you observe people and then you know everybody eventually takes it into their own right. realm and you actually there's not a person in this world doing a job in any profession that is in a blend of other people they've seen and then they they mix what they like from that or what they believe in from that into their own nobody is totally original that's what I'm saying okay all right tell us a little bit about the DVD series you have out it was neat this this one was actually launched first and it's called success falls in training Let me have that. Let me go keep talking. and it's it's awesome I say it's awesome because all of my DVDs are like a fly on the wall set Wayne and so there's nothing prescripted it's the horses were feral foals they were PMU foals in this DVD so it's about the Premarin industry and it enlightens people about the Premarin 
industry. The foals are a byproduct of Premarin and a lot are destined for slaughter. So this involved a rescue and it involved gentling them. The communication is body language, energy and telepathic means. The step-by-step -step guide helps anybody with untouched foals, untouched horses, taking them through the first touch, the first halter, the first leading, the first steps, the first blanket, you name it. It's about five and a half hours long um, and it's been met with great, great interest and great reviews around the world. And it, it's called Success Foals in Training. Now, you've got another one here we're going to talk about. Uh, energy healing for horses and that is Reiki? Reiki, yes. I'm a Karuna Reiki master and over the years I discovered that um, no, there's two parts to this. One is that the language of the horse consists of energetic connection so one can move a horse through energy influence a horse through energy it's about the path of authenticity that's one piece but then when you begin to take energy healing to the horses, they're amazing individuals and so they not only facilitate healing for people but they can also receive the healing. For me, this DVD is about taking Reiki, energy healing, to the horses. What makes it unique is the language of the horse. So it's about reading the horse, understanding the Reiki registers, so how they respond, understanding that the horses will show you where to put their hands, the, the asking permission. It's, it's set in uh, Bitterroot Ranch in Wyoming basically surrounded by 100,000 acres, absolutely beautiful DVD. They're both the only ones of their kind. Nobody's taken Reiki to the horses before. So it's a really nice treat. Well, it's a treat to talk with you, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. Because we're here at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo, and not only do we get to interview and meet you and talk to you about your approach to, you know, the horse world, but we're going to get a chance to see Anna in action. So if you'll just keep watching, we're going to show you part of a clinic so uh, let's let's let the people watch and see uh, see how you do with this. It's been nice to have you with us. I'm going to shake your hand here. Thanks, Wayne. Right. Good to meet you too. Thank you. So watch watch Anna in action right now here on <laughs> here on Speaking of Horses. <laughs> Thank you. There's also the telepathic component, and that will be that horses seeing pictures, all animals seeing pictures, all humans seeing pictures. And we send images to these horses. The images will be received if you've seen the law of retraction. Um, you'll see a little bit more of the scientific version about that. But all animals have that telepathic means and we incorporate that into the horse whispering. So ultimately you will have telepathy, energy, and body language when you communicate with a horse. Each piece is its own language for you to learn. So you're learning how to read the horse as well as how to behave around them. So that gives you a little bit of background on the um, horse whispering. When these guys feel comfortable, and that doesn't mean all three together, we'll start the TLC. And that means you guys can start with the ears, eyes, mouth, get to know your horse, get to know Onyx, who will either take you seriously or not. And so back to these dually halters, they're pressure halters. Every halter really has a degree of pressure, be it on the pole or on the nose. These have the rope on the nose. And so I'm just having a look to see who's clipped on the side. If they're clipped on the side, it's on the pressure halter. If they're clipped on underneath, it's a normal halter. You can actually ride in this halter, lead, load, and teach them a bunch of things like how to overcome obstacles, the spook busting, um, behavioral issues, so preparing for the farrier, um, leading, going into trailers, you name it. So that's the pressure halter. What's different from this than a chain, because many people might just say, well, I have a chain at home. The chain will lock into place. So you've got these little uh, locks here, and if it stays locked, there's no release. Horses learn from the release, not the pressure. So the chain is very different than a pressure halter, and this will just slide with an instantaneous release. We're looking for releases within three to eight tenths of a second, and so that rope will release within the three to eight tenths of a second. The equipment's only as good as the hands that hold it, and so we're looking for soft hands from all the students as we move forward, and that's as soft as the horse can be. So we may be a little firmer on times to keep everybody safe, but other times you're gonna see a huge slack in that line so that these horses are comfortable. When we work with the TLC, I'm just gonna move over here so I can see people more. There's a choice um, as to how we begin. We want to be standing in the shoulder, which is the, places, the safest place to stand. 
And as, as we're in the shoulder there, if the horse does move around, we can correct the footfall, we can ask them to stand, and the first thing we start with would be this trust piece with the ears, eyes, and mouth. What we've found out over the years is if you massage the ears, it not only prepares them for medication, so in the, in the event that you've got to turn the ear inside out and look for mites or for ticks, etc., but it will also prepare them for the show world. So many of you might use the clippers. We had a clipping demonstration yesterday. And so if you ask for this head drop and you're looking for the massage of the ear, you're preparing your horse for medical reasons. You're preparing your horse for clipping. But a lot of them will find comfort in the ear massage. Humane manufacturing mats reduce bedding costs. They cushion animals' joints and muscles. Mats will not absorb moisture and animal fluids. You know, all of our recycled rubber mats and rubber floor products are made using only the best of the best, clean, green, and recycled. Antibacterial and antifungal agents are added during the manufacturing process. Guaranteed not to curl or buckle, as you see here. Rubber mats use the lock tough system. Use humane manufacturing stall mats for all of your needs. Speaking of horses is made possible by Equisentials Horse Care Products for products developed by a horse person for horse people and horse use. Please check out Equisentials Horse Products. They have all the products you need to perfectly care for your horse's coat and physical appearance and well-being. Equisentials. Well, welcome. Here we are speaking of horses, and we're at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo in uh, beautiful Denver, Colorado. And right now, standing beside me is Mr. Ron McLaughlin, and we're with the uh, Classical Stock Seat School of Arizona. Now, it's a, it's a neat concept. I like it. So, uh, Ron, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the school and then about uh, your training programs and how people... First of all, you know, like what it exactly is. Describe what you're doing. Okay. Well, the classical stock seat school is um, we're promoting and trying to keep in, in the horse world uh, the training and the foundation work of Monty Foreman and myself. And our goal is to train quality riding instructors which we have a long program doing. Uh, a lot of people get a little nervous with the word classical. Classical just means correct, time proven. Stock seat is the original way to say Western. Uh, so we're the, we're the correct Western writing is, is the seat we're after. And we're working uh, to prove that uh, we can sit correctly and be humane in handling our horses. Uh, the goal, though, is to train amateurs. We train a lot of amateurs, but we want trained riding instructors, which the industry really needs. Well, that's true, because there's a, a lot of people out there that, come on, I'll teach you how to do this. And, and, you know, you need somebody that knows the concept of what you're after and knows the proper instruction. And it's uh, almost more lengthy to train the instructor than train the student. Oh, it sure is. Our, our long-term instructor program is anywhere from seven to ten years. So it's a strong commitment, and obviously it has a high dropout rate. Yeah, but if you think about it, if you look over on the dressage side, to go all the way through a, a pre-St. George or Grand Prix dressage, you're looking at the same commitment hours. You sure are. And uh, like the Spanish Riding School, it's roughly 10 or 11 years to become a rider there. Right. you got to put the time in. So tell us about your school in Arizona. Give us a little insight into that. Well, we're located in the southeast corner in Cochise County, down by the Mexican border. Um, we have resident programs where we uh, take people for five days, eight days, two weeks. This would mainly be amateurs, non-pros. Uh, then we, our long program steps up. People come for 30 days, then they would leave, they would come back for uh, six months, and then it moves up to a, a year. And that way they, they step into it. It's a strong commitment to say you're gonna come somewhere and work for seven yeah. to 10 years. So you gotta find out if this is for you. Okay, yeah. and so we try to work, you know, work in keeping things mellow for people too. Well, it's a neat looking program, and I, I talked to you guys the other day when we first got to Denver about it and uh, really enjoyed it. I'll tell you what, right now, 
we are going to watch a little bit of, uh, of your clinic and show people what this is all about. But remember, check them out. You're going to like this. It's the uh, Classical Stock Seat School of Arizona. And just spell that all out, Classical Stock Seat School, A-Z, dot com to go to their webs dot org. I'm sorry. I, I read it wrong. <laughs> dot org. Okay. And, and check it out. But right now, let's watch a little footage of uh, Ron and the group in action. Thank you. You're quite welcome. These rolls are important to us. Turn right, go to the rail. Right lead. We're in a right lead, roll away. Comes out in the left lead. And come out and disunited. In a right lead. Same lead rolls to the right. Stick your hand out. That was the same lead roll. You're doing same and out. Okay, loosen up your curb rein. Now do a same lead roll at a walk to the right. Canter out. Just do the same lead roll at the walk. Same lead roll to the right. Keep the pony on the hind end. You're coming out of it in a too soon. Canter between each end, please. Canter. Same lead roll to the right. She's in a right lead, same and out. Walk it. She comes all the way around, now back in a left lead. Same thing, just walk through it. This is the same and out. We use this maneuver a lot in clinics when we're, we're working a lot of riders that don't understand their leads and they get a lot of wrong leads. By doing that extra five degrees and having them go back, they come out in the correct lead. This develops the horse's coordination and makes them handy. Okay? Same and out. So, so far we have a roll away, away from the lead you're on. The fastest way to turn around, we have a same lead roll on a parallel line, takes a little longer, and we have a same and out, which obviously takes a little longer than the roll away too. Now go to rolling outs, left lead. She's in a left lead. She's gonna roll to the right, walk it, 185. She's gonna come back in the left lead. So these are all different ways that we use the horse's hind end. It builds agility, coordination, makes the horse handier. That's our goal. Training techniques aren't worth much if the efficiency level is low. Well, we're here still, Rocky Mountain Horse Expo in Denver, and uh, we have a little uh, different topic to cover right now. My guest is Robin Davis, and Robin has a horse that is called a Herda horse, and I'm going to let her explain to you what Herda is, and then we'll talk about how the horse is doing. So first, Robin, welcome, and second, tell us what Herda is. Herda is hereditary equine regional dermal asthenia. It's typically known as the skin disease of quarter horses, paints, and Appaloosas, or known as the Poco Bueno. It came originated from Poco Bueno. Okay, so you have a horse now that you acquired a, a year or two ago uh, that has this condition. So now what are you doing for it and how do you deal with it? So right now we've done everything from the ground. She's not rideable. Um, we started her under saddle and in about two to three months after we started her, she produced saddle sores that never healed. My vet, who's an out-of-the-box thinker, um, realized that we needed to send a DNA sample to UC Davis, and that's how we found out that she was afflicted with HERDA. So since then, I've spent time with the top research vets in the country to educate myself on what, kind, what her nutritional requirements were, what was possible. Um, she's not rideable, so I had to think outside the box and figure out what our life was going to be like other than riding. All right, so this condition is controllable but not curable, right? Correct. Right. 
So now, when they have the condition, what are the basic, how do you know they have the condition? How do you know it is this condition? What happens with the skin that, that makes this, uh, that, that you easily identify this? So what happens with these horses is they're collagen compromised. It's most notable in the skin. These horses have the girders between the layers, the three layers of the skin, is not as strong as your normal horse. So when we started her under saddle, she produced saddle sores and the skin, the top layer of the skin, came away from the other two layers and it will never reattach itself again. So if you were to pull up her skin, you would look at that horse and think that that horse was dehydrated because the skin would go down very slowly when in fact that skin is no longer attached. Okay. So, and that's a condition that you only control and medicate for but you can't cure. So you're looking at things now that you do with a horse that doesn't require saddling or harnessing even, right? Exactly right. We did try ground driving her, and the good news and the bad with her is she's very bright and willing, so she does ground drive beautifully, but we were concerned about the harness um, wearing on her skin, so we backed off from that. So we went from there to doing things um, in halter, in hand. Um, we've done, we've competed in showmanship, and we've competed in halter. Um, we've also done things at Liberty. No halter, no harness, um, and worked with her from the ground to do tricks and to do trail obstacle clinics from the ground. So everything else that you could possibly imagine other than riding. But other than that, the horse is doing well for you. Now, there, you are kind of the self-professed spokesman here for HERDA. So how do people uh, get involved in helping with this? Do you have a website, a web group, a Facebook page? Tell us about your connection so that other people that may have horses with the same uh, problem or they suspect the same problem. How do you get all this together? What I've done along the way is I have created a website called herdahorse.com and on that website are links to relevant articles, the latest and greatest information, as well as links to where you can have your horse tested, um, even the link to UC Davis so they can have the test site themselves and find out the costs of things. A in addition to, I've put photos out there of symptoms that Penelope has displayed that are some are common and some are are uncommon. For example, these horses are flexible off the charts, so they're very flexible because their tendons and ligaments are less elastic than a normal horse. So everyone focuses on the skin, but we have to realize that collagen is throughout every organ in the body. So these horses, it's been documented that they're more prone to ocular issues. I've seen pictures of paper-thin heart valves. So it's more than just the skin, and I've put all of that information for other, other horse owners to educate themselves on my website. So what you're saying too is if this is in fact like in the heart muscles and the like, what you're really saying is that uh, overworking could overstress the heart, could cause all kinds of other problems besides just the skin that we haven't even thought about. Exactly right. Um, and my horse um, became very lame all through this winter and in fact we weren't sure she was going to make it through the winter. She was graded a four out of five lame on her left hind and we think that's because of all the extra wear and tear she has on her joints because they're not properly supported by those tendons and ligaments. So again, how do they get a hold of you to learn more about this? If they go to my website, herdahorse.com, they can click on the Contact Us link and they can email me from there if they have any questions. And that's Herda, H-E-R-D-A, herdahorse, spell it out, dot com. Robin, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we got more coming. We're on Speaking of Horses at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo. Gooseberry Natural Feed was created to provide healthy products, basic nutrition, and enhance the digestive system and process in all equines. Gooseberry has certified organic ingredients for a total health feed. To learn more about Gooseberry Natural Feed, contact them at gooseberrynaturalfeed.net. Woodstar Products offers custom stalls for every barn and every barn style. Woodstar offers top quality design, construction, and customer service 
for every stall and barn need you can come up with. Custom built for you. Design your own stall with their new system online at woodstarproducts.com. Check them out. That's Woodstar Products. All right, we are uh, once again here, Rocky Mountain Horse Expo. Speaking of horses, now, what we've got here, Bill Robinson is my guest, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about it. This is a product that's just coming out, and uh, Bill does a great job with it. And this is a neat product. It's so simple in what it is, yet it is so necessary to the public. So, Bill, welcome, and tell us about this product. Kind of you to see things like that. I sure appreciate it. Most of the people will tie their horses up with a knot. And what happens with, with, with a knot is that they do not get any slack from the knot at all. And something spooks them. What happens is that they feel that the thing that they are afraid of will run back and probably eat them or something like that. And so they need to move, need to move their feet to get out of there to prevent some of these things they imagine might happen. So they'll pull back and gosh, still all kinds of things. Like I said, all bad. They can get hurt, property damage, and that sort of thing. We feel we have a little bit better answer to that particular problem. First of all, uh, this is one basic com, uh, basic thing or trait about this. I'm going to stop them real quick and show this. Okay. This is actually the device we're talking <clears> about. <throat> The, one of the basic principles of, of the product, that the force of the pullback is on the object it is tied to and not the object itself. So this is what I mean. You take this and you put it in right in front of the rope and you just take this and twirl it around the one side and then on the other side. Now, if when the horse pulls back, it allows it to give it relief that it needs, it won't panic. It's really interesting that all they need to do is go back a step or two, and if they get that instant relief, it stops them, and they're, they're kind of complacent, whatever. Big thing that we have to be concerned about is the amount of pressure. Now, this is not enough pressure for my horse. If my horse had this type of pressure, be eating in five minutes. But for a colt, that's right, this is probably just what you need. But to add more pressure to it, all we need to do is take this little rope over here and put it on this hook. And when they pull back, it gives them more pressure. But let's say, and boy, there's just so much versatility to animals, ropes, and that sort of thing. If you need more pressure, you take the, the rope and put it to the back over here. And this will, again, give them more pressure, but at the same time, it'll allow them to move back and relief. So that's the big thing, as long as you get this relief. It's a great safety item. It saves fingers getting caught in knots. It saves, uh, actually in my case, it saves a horse pulling back so hard that uh, it takes a hatchet to get the knot untied. You just <laughs> cut the rope, and I call that a hatchet knot. But it saves all of that, and it also saves the horse from spooking so badly because they don't feel like they're totally confined. Exactly right. If they feel tri trapped and they're claustrophobic, as you know, and if, with those two things going for them, they, they feel they have to move their feet. They have to move. And if they can, they'll pull back. And I could tell you horror stories and imagine you can too. And we don't need another horror story. But anyways, things, bad things happen and they could even kill themselves. So now, Bill, how do they get a hold of you and get a hold of this product? I have a website. It's called uh, BeSafeTie.com, and that is uh, the, the website. And, and when it goes in detail and how to use the product, with this product over here, unfortunately, doesn't have any sales ability to it whatsoever. You don't know what it is and how to use it. It has to be demonstrated. And with this website, I think it'll go a long way to demonstrating how to use it properly. Now you have to see a video or see it in person, one or the other, and then you understand it. Bill. Thank what you very much. What a pleasure, and it's an honor for me to be here. Thank you.